Hey gang, welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed episode of The Vintage Someone I Forget Who. If you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. If you're old to the channel, welcome back. Don't forget to not subscribe. And if you are old to the channel, I've been away for a few weeks. And if you're new to the channel, then that doesn't matter. So why should I even mention it? Today, I'm going to be looking at a piece of Radio Shack gear, realistic STA 76 stereo receiver. Now, whenever I talk about or review a piece of realistic or Radio Shack equipment, I like to wear the shirt. So it's not like I've just filmed, I don't know, 20 or 30 of these wearing the same shirt in the same day. Or maybe I did. Who knows? That's the magic and mystery of YouTube. -y. So I guess uh, let's get into it. Shall we? We shall. He got into vintage audio a year ago. But there's a lot of things he still doesn't know. So he started up a channel on YouTube. -y, and here he is now. The Vintage Newbie! Here we are at the front of the realistic STA 76. Now you can't really see it because the lettering has been scratched off. This uh, little something, little info, little background on this receiver. It was given to me by a friend of mine for the price of free. Oh yeah, there's where the lettering should be STA six fit MFM stereo receiver. So yeah, buddy of mine had this in his closet. Asked me if I wanted it. Said that it worked, but it had some issues. And I said sure, cause I like realistic Radio Shack equipment. Um, and he told me that it has a hum, and he was not lying. So let's get into the functions and features of this thing. First of all, you got your power button. It's over here. Oh, but first, what's that right there? Is that the dial pointer? It doesn't look like that one. It kind of looks like a nail. Well, that's because it is. So there is the screen. It should all be blue. But the blue film that is behind there, um, my buddy peeled it off, I guess, so he could see the little nail there that is being used as a dial pointer. Normally, it has one like this one does that is lit up and which also, whenever it gets to a station in stereo, it, oh, whoops, it is set to not be on the radio right now. There we go. Whoops. Professional. All right. Yeah, so see how that kind of turns red whenever it hits the station? And then it's yellow when it's not. And then it's red. Then it's not. Yeah. So that's what the one on this one's supposed to do. But it's not connected. I don't know why. I haven't seen them in a few weeks to find out the answer to that. So it should normally be blue like that all the time. And also, this thing has quite a bit of a hum to it. Hold on a second. I don't have speakers connected, but I will plug in my headphones and hold them up to the microphone. So I've hooked up a speaker, and I will hold the microphone up to that speaker, and I will turn on the volume button, which you'll see or you'll be able to tell that I'm doing that because the phone will awkwardly zoom in to the receiver because I'm doing three things with two hands. <laughs> Silly humans. All right, here we go. Gonna power it on. And I'll adjust the volume. Music. See the buzz 
Cause is back. See, I wasn't lying. There's a buzzing noise. And the causes for that could be endless. It could be a faulty capacitor for the power supply. It could be a ground loop. Any number of those two things. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll get it checked out. Maybe I'll try and figure it out myself. Don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments below. So back to the functions of this thing. Speaker is disconnected, so we can fire it back up again. Now you got your volume knob there, which normally produces sound. Got your balance knob, so you can switch from right to left speaker. Your treble, your b -b -b bass, and your speakers. You can go just out to headphones. You can do speakers A. You can do quattro vox. You can do speakers B. You can do speakers A and B. Now I did actually recently hook up two sets of speakers to my ST90 and did the quattro vox thing. And yeah, it kind of kicked down the volume of the B speakers. So that was pretty neat. But they are right next to each other, so I didn't get like the full surround sound function of it. You got your headphones jack. You've got, did I do the loudness button already? Oh, you got your FM muting, you got your mono, you got your tape monitor, and then there's your loudness button. So I guess I didn't do it. And then you've got your various functions, your AM, your FM, your phono, your auxiliary, and then your uh, tuning signal strength to see if you're getting a good signal, which is really good for this since it doesn't have the light up tuner. And the back of this thing is pretty standard. You got your fuse, you got your unswitched outlet, which I have this tape deck plugged into and also connected in the jacks. It's the only thing I have really jacked, uh, plugged into and using because this is pretty much just a display piece here. I can have the receiver going, it's lit up, and then I've got the tape deck with the record button pressed in, so it just kind of makes the needles bounce in the meters, which I think is pretty neat looking. You got your speaker jacks there, not your speaker jacks, but your, you know, little connectors right there to use either speaker wire or spades. You can also, if you have RCA jack speakers, you can plug them in there. Tape monitor, tape player, aux one, aux two. That's right, this has two auxes. I forgot about that. Um, and your phono cartridge and then your antenna and stuff. So yep, just got it hooked up just so it kind of, like I said, it's kind of a display piece at the bottom of all this other stuff here. And why have it as a display piece? Well, because that tape deck on the bottom, while it doesn't work, it is a parts unit for another one that is very similar to it that I have. But the meters work, so I just keep the little record button pressed in and it makes the meters bounce while being connected to this receiver. And I figure since it's sitting there taking up space anyway, might as well plug it in and make it look cool. And then it can kind of match with all the other equipment there. And when it's all lit up and plugged in, I don't know, it just looks cool. Fuck it, I like it. Back. Now the STA-76 was built or put out or sold, I guess. In 1975, and I think it just had a one-year run. It is an 18 watt per channel, so a 36 watt receiver. When I did have speakers up, hooked up to it and turned the volume up, it cranked quite a bit. It does say it has a total harmonic distortion of 1%, which I don't really know exactly what that means, but I know like the other two receivers I have have like a point, I think that one's got a 0.3 and that one's got a 0.5, or maybe the other way around, or maybe somewhere similar to that, or maybe it's 0.03 and 0 0.05. Maybe I'll look that up. Maybe I just looked it up or remembered. Who knows? The mystery and magic of editing. So that one is a point, has a 0.5 total harmonic distortion. And that one has a 
zero five total harmonic distortion. What does that mean? Nobody knows. No one at all. One of life's many mysteries of the universe. But I do know that the STA-90 sounds great whenever it's playing. So does the SX-780. But this one is on par with that one, if not better. Depending on who you ask. Depending on what kind of speakers you have hooked up to it. But speakers are a topic for another day. Because the only speaker right now is me. And I say that that STA-76, whenever it was hooked up and music was playing and the volume was on and you weren't hearing the buzzing, it sounded pretty good. And also, it picked up radio stations quite nicely. Now, these two receivers both have antennae hooked up to them. And there's still a couple of stations that they have trouble pulling. But the 76 pulled in everything really clear. So that's pretty cool. And the fact that, in case you missed it, this thing has two auxiliary jack inputs for it. Now, it only has one tape in and tape out. So you couldn't hook up like a cassette deck and an eight track recorder, but you could hook up a cassette deck, an eight track player, and a CD player. You could hook up a cassette deck to tape on and maybe a phone or an iPod and a CD player. You have three choices of various digital and analog inputs through which to play music. So that's pretty cool. This one, the 90, also has three, but it's, uh, 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 aside from phono, does need to be, well, you can do tape one and tape two and then one aux. So the tapes just have an in and out jacks, whereas the aux just has in or out. Wow. I am a stumbling, bumbling, not prepared, dug, ding, maroon. So I guess that concludes it. I would like to either fix it, learn how to fix it myself, or get someone to fix it if they can do it cheaply since I imagine if it is just a power supply capacitor should hopefully be not a lot of money because it'd be good to have as a backup receiver in case this guy or lady I'm not gonna assume your receiver gender polarities but in case it ever needs to go into the shop and then I'll have the 76 as a backup sound good sounds great and it does sound great you heard it through the few seconds of station identification so that i wouldn't hopefully get bumped or flagged or anything so there you go thanks for being here riding it out to the bitter dragging screeching end have a blessed day Thanks for watching.